Hello, my name is Marcus. I'm the compiler of a collection of therapy quotes entitled Psychoanalytic Self-Awareness Quotes. This is TQ24, therapy quote number 24. The client began the transference neurosis by projecting onto me the infantile image of an org with the desire and the power to damage. Quote, what has my mother got to do with this? She's dead, leave her in peace. You misunderstand, I was not talking about your real mother, but about the distorted image you built up in your fantasy. That unconscious image must be the model for your repetitiveness. So I thought this quote offers a continuation to the last uh, video, TQ23. In TQ23, um, reference was made to the idea of unconsciously projecting one's memory of their mother when they were an infant. Um, th this quote uh, corrects me a little bit uh, or corrects what I was saying and, and updates it and clarifies it. It's not literally that a person projects an image of their mother onto the casino or onto the other person. They're, they're projecting... Uh, the theory is that the image the infant creates is a, a condensation, a composite of his feelings uh, plus remember the babies the baby feels at one with the mother so there's so the baby feels um, omnipotent right infantile megalomania so this image is powerful and the mother of course is powerful but the child doesn't see a difference between the mother and the child to the child it's just him it's just one so it's actually an image of his own impression of himself as being all powerful um, and the infant is angry so you put that together and you got the image of an org uh, as, as in the quote for example now this frightening image can be any frightening image um, you name it uh, could be a frightening animal it could be the boogeyman it could you know any uh, witch uh, giant uh, and monster it can be anything it's, in other words the image is powerful and it's angry so that's what the child stores the theory is the child stores this image which was created out of the child's impression of himself as being all-powerful he thinks he's a god at that early stage okay infantile megalomania so remember, this video is a continuation of TQ23. It, it sort of goes together. Um, if I'm not making sense in this video, please refer to the previous video and then watch this one as well. So, um, yeah, so that's an important clarification that, that I think uh, Burglar makes uh, in this quote. And uh, he, he's saying that, uh, he, he's, he's, he's clarifying that the repetition compulsion is comprised of this image, this frightening image. So uh, can I just clarify? The little baby comes out of the womb. He's merged with the mother. And that's... Uh, the baby and the mother are one from the baby's point of view and the baby thinks he's somehow all the theory is the baby thinks he must be like a little god because he can get all of his needs he can get all of his needs met just by needing them just by maybe thinking about them maybe by making a gesture he doesn't really need, he thinks he's quite powerful it doesn't need to do much so there's this theory of infantile megalomania now if he's refused he's going to be angry and now this experience 
comes a memory, and this memory, now we're into the dream world, can be a frightening uh, uh, image. And then when the person grows up, they're going to project that image onto others or find a way or create some excuse or opportunity to see that image on the other person. And then, like we said in the previous quote, repeat the cycle. So the cycle was, imagine an adult version of the following. Okay, so the infant has a need, it's refused, he, he's hurt, he wants to protest, hey, hey, come on, I need food, I, I, I need a blanket or whatever. Um, and he, he can't make that request, he can't protest. And then the result is he feels kind of, well, let's say self-pity, he feels sorry for himself, for himself. So imagine an adult version of those three parts of the child's version. Try to translate or transpose um, how an adult would symbolically re repeat those three parts. Okay, so the adult might, uh, in the example of the quote, uh, he, he the, the the client sees the therapist uh, unconsciously as a dangerous mother, like the child felt that his, that his real mother was dangerous, even though he, he didn't recognize her as a, as, a, as a dangerous mother at that time. He didn't, he doesn't have, his image is based on an image of him and the mother together, so that's something powerful, and that this image is angry, and since he's fused with the mother, and he's internalizing it, okay? So now, in the adult version, uh, the person is projecting this frightening image onto the therapist, and now the person is arguing with the therapist, let's say. And, um, and burglars in, in explaining this process. So uh, let, let's read it again. The client began the transference neurosis by projecting onto me the infantile image of an org with the desire and the power to damage. Okay, so that's the memory of the baby being hurt when the mother didn't feed the baby and the baby was damaged because he couldn't reply and he was helpless, right? So the client says, hey, why are you talking about my mother? Leave her out of this. This has nothing to do with my mother. And he replies, the therapist replies, well, no, no, uh, you're right. I wasn't talking about your actual mother. I'm talking about this uh, distorted image you built up in your fantasy. Okay. And, and this is the image that's being repeated. So when he says, this is the image that's being repeated, this is the power of self-defeating behavior. You're blowing things way out of proportion, out of perspective. So in the last example, uh, the woman was on a second date with the guy, and, and she's reacting as if this guy's a very emotionally, unconsciously emotionally reacting as if there's a real... Uh, she's making a mountain out of a molehill, right? <laughs> From the child's point of view, it's serious. It's it's big and important, but from the adult's point of view, it's not a big deal if if if, the, if there's no connection, it doesn't work out, right? Um, it's not it's not that uh, a little disappointing, of course. You have hopes, but it, it doesn't have to have that kind of a st strong um, emotional aspect to it. Um, the theory is. If she is feeling a strong emotional aspect to it, it's because this, this, she's triggered, this past thing has been triggered. 
and each person experiences to a different degree, to a different amount. Um, I mean, think about it. Imagine uh, baby one in the orphanage, left alone, ignored, and all that. They might grow up quite provocative and, and express their anger, you know, because they were left alone in the in the nursery or in the orphanage or something. Uh, baby two was was in a was formed a secure attachment to their mom, was in a safe place, there was no trauma, no sudden, uh, no, no, no prenatal trauma. The woman, when she was pregnant, she didn't go to a heavy metal concert with a pregnant baby. So, the, <laughs> um, yeah, I was sad to hear about that, that some pregnant woman went to a very loud rock concert and, uh, the report was that the, the baby was traumatized by, by the overwhelming. So babies can be traumatized in, in, in the womb. Um, so you can imagine that being, if someone has to unconsciously, you see in a case when it's so severe like that, maybe they can't even try to re repeat that in, in, in daily life as they grow up. It's just way, way overwhelming. So what, happen, what happens is the body bears the burden. The organs bear the burden, right? It, there's a quote about uh, if we don't cry, then the then the organs cry. If, if the human doesn't cry, then, then the internal organs cry or something. I forgot who said it. So that that's a whole issue. That's one of the theories about psychosomatic issues. If if um, some things are just too much, and then the body has to bear it. That's the theory. That's the, that's the theory. You know, um, that's just the theory. So, uh, it's taking forever to upload these videos. <laughs> it takes half a day to upload a 10 minute video. <laughs> and this poor little. No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad to have the chance to uh, think about and talk about these ideas. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm learning about them myself as I speak with you and, um, and, uh, and I'm happy to pass along what I've, what I, what I, what I've picked up in my reading journey. Um, you know, for the moment, because I'm starting out, I, I closed the comments section because I'm just starting out and I don't want to be bombarded with trolls and all, all that. And, uh, so I want to wait till I establish myself and uh, have a little more confidence and and know that there may be some people interested in this topic and, and I'll open up the comments section. But I'm just starting out, so I'm doing this uh, bit by bit. Anyways, uh, so this definitely has been Edmund Burglar Day because this is the fourth quote on Burglar's Theory so far. And um, maybe I'll do one more before the day is up. Okay, thank you very much. Um, hope everybody's well out there. Um, this has been TQ number 24. Thank you again. See you next time.